These children are learning the future is theirs to see. A holographic teacher that's by your, on your table. And that whatever will be is actually in their hands. A hovercraft um, chair so it can teach you lessons so you're not late. This is Ashton Park Secondary in Bristol, where a cross-curricular lesson is being delivered on education for the next generation. Two classes of Year 8 pupils, assembled in the school's resources centre, are being asked to consider the future role of teachers and the future use of technology in education. How do they think their own children might be taught? If you'd like to run a cross-curricular lesson on the future of education and teaching, then visit teachers.tv forward slash tomorrow for a special Tomorrow's Teacher set of lesson plans and resources. This lesson has been developed with help from English and media teacher Carolyn Twist, who's recruited design and technology teacher Graham Kay. But to help spark imaginations, the session starts with a technology expert from the organisation Future Lab. So, lots of people think about the future, and very often we think about things like these. We think about robots. We've got this chap here. Now, this is a real robot, and he lives in America, and his name's Kismet. He can react to the way in which you move. So if you look kind of puzzled, he'll look really perky and happy. And if you look a little bit sad, he'll try and cheer you up. So there's a computer that's getting quite good at understanding how your face moves and how your body moves and whether you're leaning in and listening. And that's something that teachers normally are pretty good at, is thinking about how you're getting on, whether you're feeling all right, if you understand what's going on. We also asked education consultant and former science teacher Matthew Tosh to advise and comment on the lesson. The purpose for getting Dan involved was um, the school's based in Bristol and Future Lab are based in Bristol and it's a, such an amazing resource to use on your doorstep. They're looking forwards in education and that of course is the purpose of this lesson. So I'd encourage schools to look at your local university uh, education department so if you've got a, a teacher training college nearby where they're doing PGC courses very often in those colleges there's a lot of research going on into education and the future of education. Of course there's a subject associations as well and professional organisations that teachers can tap into. And that is a 3D printer. So you can design something maybe in a DT class. You design a shoe, you design it, make it look beautiful, you decide what colour it is and then you print it out, and it prints out layers of plastic, and it'll build you up a real model of your shoe. And maybe in 5, 10, 15 years' time, that'll be in every classroom. Who here has got any idea of something that might happen in the future? A keyboard that's on the table. Brilliant, that's a great idea. Yeah. Homework doing machine. Homework doing machine. Touch screens instead of books. Brilliant. So one of the things we need to be thinking about today is what possible technologies can you be thinking about that might help you do what you need to be doing in school, or might help teachers in the future, or might help you interact in different ways with your friends. Okay. So there are all sorts of possibilities with technology, but the sorts of future that we want to see, what we call preferable futures, are the sorts of things that will come about because of the way in which we act. Possible futures... But before the pupils go any further, they're asked to consider what they want out of education. Beyond Current Horizons, an initiative that promotes future thinking, has developed an online league of priorities for learning. So click on Power League and there are two leagues down here. One which is looking at what education is for and another which is about how education should happen. So what is education for, do you think? Do you think it's about helping people um, to get a job or is it about understanding big ideas at school? And who thinks that school is mostly about helping you guys get a job? Oh, I think that's more than half, isn't it? And then it'll ask us another question. What's more important? Is it about being creative and developing your ability to be really creative and have creativity? Or is it about learning about geography? Uh, what's more important? Geography? <laughs> being creative. Uh, I think we have a winner. OK, so we'll vote there. The group disperses into pairs to work through more options presented by the website. So geography or interpersonal skills. Developing. I think that's better because you get along with people and so you get a happy life. Yeah. Music. Music. Pupils come back together to see how they voted collectively. What do they want education to provide? Now, up at the top, confidence. So, a lot of people have voted for confidence. I would say that's quite an important thing. I guess some of you do too. Um, looking down the list, Environmental challenges, problem that's going to face all of us. And right down at the bottom, the least important thing, and it's way, 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 way down there, is 
religion. Interesting. Not a view you would have had a couple of hundred years ago. OK. For this second part of the lesson on the future of education, the group is asked to concentrate on the schools of tomorrow. Any ideas just off the top of people's heads now? Yes. No exercise books. A desk with a computer built into it. No teachers? No teachers at all. Fantastic idea, yes. Something on their head, what could do writing for you? The group has shown a video about a school that's considered to be ahead of its time. This is an extract from a teacher's TV programme which featured the Genogli School in Nottingham. At a time when interactive whiteboards are being rolled out across the country, this school decided to reject them in favour of tablet PCs and a completely wireless network. That is something that's happening at the moment, yet it looks quite futuristic. So if that's where the newest, sort of latest developments are in education, that's something that children can almost relate to because they're in the school themselves. And so the purpose of using that video was just to bring it you know, into context so they could see something now and then perhaps use that as a springboard for looking forwards. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get you to get into groups of four. I've got a number of questions to pose about what you think a school would be like in the future. So, you know, when we've got a new child come to school here, they stay yeah. with somebody on their timetable for a little while. Well, imagine you're 30 years ahead and you get buddied up with another child in the school. How are you getting on? What have you come up with so far? Um, robot teacher. OK, robot teacher. Yeah. Good. Um, the 3D uh, printer. That's, that is a fascinating prospect, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Is it easier to think of what the sort of new technology there might be, rather than thinking about how our society might be? Yeah, mind Yeah. Well, that's good. If you mind wanders, then you, you write down things as you think of them all over the paper. So any thought is a valid thought. And what do you think the robot will be able to do? This group realises that future technology may not only affect how children are taught, but what they're taught. More on, like, robots, not many people will know about, like, how to use them and things like that. Because if it's just came in and that, they'll be, they'll be like, extra ed education on how to use it and things like that. Ah, so you have, like, robot classes? Yeah. So learning how to look after robots, learning about different technologies and how they can be used and stuff. That's, yeah. a, that's a really good thinking. Well done, well done. You What's could up? have, like, a ball to do with sports, yeah. and it can go into, like, a rugby ball or a normal ball or... So it changes to football, how yeah. it's used. Yeah. Fantastic. So yeah, you'd be able to buy just one or two resources, one or two things in the sports cupboard, yeah. and they'll change depending on what you want them for. Yeah. That's a great idea. Uh, um, in the library, there could be like a little computer which you talk to, and then you can say which book you want or what topic, and then it will tell you where it is. Do you think people would be more inclined to use that than look at a piece of paper to find it? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. easier, probably quicker as well. There were some astonishing ideas that came out of it. I mean, that's that's one thing that I personally got out of it, the, the sheer breadth of the imagination that was on display there. A lot of pupils wanted things to make life easier for themselves, though, isn't it? There was one suggestion <laughs> about a, a programme where you could just, it would just dress you and feed you and you did nothing but sit in a vegetative state, I suspect. But Are you in favour of that yourself? For me, yes, but I, don't know <laughs> for them, but I think they deserve more. Does anybody have any brainwaves about what they're going to be doing in 30 years' time? Virtual headsets, like for history and languages, so you can see what's happening. So, like, well, in World War One, you could go back and see how people fought and stuff. Lovely, James. If there's all this technology in, then you'll have technology. I reckon you'll have technology lessons, and if you're going to have to get more jobs, I reckon you'll have like job lessons and things like that. So you think there might be more skills that you need to yeah. learn? Okay, boys. Um. You can have a cleaner machine if you get like dirty at break or something. <laughs> like a car wash, but for you. Bradley? You can have like a robot pencil and speak into it and tell you what to write. I so, write it for you. Isn't that cheating? No. No? Um, drinks that make you like very brainy. And you just take a drink and you know like loads of subjects and languages. Like a brain cut back, like tracks for information to your brain, so it's like tells which cell it is, like. Puts in. A teleporting bus. So you, when you want to go to school, you just like it teleports you straight to the lesson. 
I mean, they yes. were quite taken with the headset, mm. you know, and the virtual reality, and I think they'd all be quite taken with having their own little avatars. Yeah. I mean, there was definitely that obsession with the technology of it and how, you know, it was really sort of technological versions of what's going on now rather than any particular change. Some of you... With pupils continuing to concentrate on the potential of technology, they're made to think about the limitations as well. And some of you have mentioned robots that would be in the room with you. Put your hands up, please, if you think there'd be a teacher in your classroom. We've got one group that wants a teacher in the room. Right. Margaret, what would we have instead of a teacher? A holographic image. Would that holographic image be able to do everything that a teacher could do? Not everything, it would just tell you what you needed to do. Put your hands up if you think you'd be able to learn everything that you needed to if you didn't have somebody to guide you and steer that learning. So you don't want a teacher, but you don't think you can do everything on your own. OK, over here. It'd be good to do it on your own, because then like, you've got your own like, time and you do it in your own pace. You're, like. How would you know what to do? It's like a big interactive board, and, like a teacher's telling you what to do. But like, you, like, she gives you options. So if we had personalised learning, everybody was coming into school, everybody was coming into the classroom, and each table had their holographic image, or you had an interactive whiteboard where you could press and find out what you needed to do, how would that meet everybody's needs in the classroom? Cool. Maybe messing around. Maybe messing around. So let's try again. Who thinks that maybe, just possibly, we might need a grown-up in the room? Right. So we got to think about the teachers maybe in a different way. Maybe you should be learning and taking more ownership and responsibility for your learning yourselves and use the technology that's available, but maybe you need support in directing that learning to make sure that you have all the skills that you need. Do we think? The actual lesson structure for Key Stage 4 would follow the same pattern, the same sorts of, of tasks, but just push it a, a bit deeper. Are there any detrimental effects to interacting with technology all the time? Even straightforward things, or I call them straightforward things, like uh, repetitive strain injury. If you're sat huddled over a computer all the time, and I'm sat here in front of a computer now, is that going to cause me a problem? Are we going to be less active in society? Would you see this very much as an introductory lesson? Yes, very much so. So where could it go from here? Oh, let's have a think. Um, well, you can focus on just the technology, you could focus on the way that society is changing, you could, you could take it into the idea of comparing other societies, other ways that we might be living together in the future. You could do the whole culture thing and mm. look at other countries and you could maybe look a bit more at the history of education, you could do the whole DT thing. Yeah. You know, then you've got all those sort of creative writing opportunities, could... then you've got all the citizenship. So there is a lot, isn't there? I mean, they could start thinking about how they're going to change the world. That's, you know, that could start here, couldn't it? Don't forget, if you'd like to run a cross-curricular lesson on the future of education and teaching, there's a special Tomorrow's Teacher set of lesson plans and resources available at teachers.tv forward slash tomorrow.